I realized the moment is when I was let go. And so that's when I was like, you know, I, I pray all the time. And so I was like, I think this is God's way of just saying like, you know, this is it. Like you can do it full time. You can put all your energy into getting this brand off the ground. And, you know, I think, I think that's just the moment where I realized that. And, you know, I think everything happens for a reason. Welcome to Innovate Fort Worth, the podcast where we highlight local innovation and the people bringing those innovations to market. I'm Cameron Cushman, and on today's show, we're talking tequila. Our guest today is Ricky Kelly, the CEO and owner of Ego Tequila. Over the past year, alcohol sales have been on the rise, and Ricky saw an opportunity to create a brand on a drink that she enjoys. Produced in Mexico, Ego is sourced from 100% agave in Jalisco and is based on water from an inactive volcanic natural spring. Ego Tequila has already won an award, taking home the silver at the Bartender's Spirit Award in 2021. Ricky, welcome to Innovate Fort Worth. <laughs> Thank you for having me, guys. <laughs> So before we get into the good stuff, we thought it was interesting to read about you and your aspirations to be an entrepreneur at a young age. What what drove that in you and, and what inspired you to one day have your own business? Um, honestly, so I grew up in Allen. We had moved back to Texas in 06. When I turned 15, um, I got a job working as a sacker at Market Street. And literally the first weekend that I had worked there, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna be able to work for anybody else. Like once I get older and you know establish myself, get my degree, I, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do it. So um, honestly, just like motivation, um, just and not wanting to work for somebody else, just pushed me towards you know this op entrepreneurship journey, so. So you didn't know you wanted to go into tequila, you just knew you wanted to own your own business and not work for somebody else. Yeah, I didn't know what I was gonna get into then, but I, I knew I was gonna work for myself eventually, yeah. There you go, yeah. that's that's great. <laughs> so Fort Worth is known for craft beer, right? We've got mm -hmm. a lot of great breweries in town. We've got a few whiskey distilleries, right? Yeah. TX, and you know, they had a big success story. Yeah. But how did you get into tequila? I mean, that's not really, I wouldn't really say that Fort Worth has much of an identity in tequila, but maybe yeah, that's the point. I got you. Um, so tequila, I've, well, turning 21, I've always been like an avid lover of tequila. Um, I first enjoyed, I first fell in love with tequila when me and my friends, we went to this kind of hole in the wall restaurant um, in Allen and the server had offered us up some free shots of tequila. And like, I had never had any before because people are always saying like, you know, tequila has given me a bad hangover. You know, no, it's messing me up. I've got some bad stories about tequila. So, I mean, I was a little nervous at first, but you know, the um, server, he's like, okay, no, we'll, we'll chill it for y'all first. And he gave it to us and it was super smooth. It smelled super good to me. Um, and it was really good quality. I That's when I fell in love with tequila. And so then, you know, I'm always like a tequila girl, you know, good margarita or a shot, you know, that was it. So the freemium model worked on you, huh? And mm -hmm. now you start a company in, in that in that world. That's, that's outstanding. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so I had went and I was working a job here, like in the Tarrant County area, and I, um, it wasn't a really good environment for me. And I think I was starting to think, okay, I need to get into something else for myself, you know, but I didn't know what I wanted to get into. And um, this, another celebrity at the time was coming out with their own liquor brand. And so I'm like, what's, what's stopping me from coming out with a tequila brand? I love tequila, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur. This is something I can do. It's going to be risky, but you know, I think it'll be worth it at the end. So I don't know, it's just doing my research. And I spoke with this consultant in Austin and you know, she just kind of guided me along the way. And you know, here I am with my own brand. So I don't know. That's fantastic. <laughs> Well, you built a really cool website, which we really enjoyed yeah. <laughs> plugging plug in through as we were preparing for this episode. But one of the things that you talk about on the website is you're trying to break the, the quote, as you say, bad tequila stigma. Mm -hmm. So how do you define that? And how did that kind of lead you to an opportunity to start your own tequila brand? Um, so 
I think a bad tequila honestly just depends, I think, on the person who's drinking tequila and what they're um, what they're looking for. You know, they've got there are college students out there that are looking to have, to have a good time. They don't have a lot of money, so they're just going to go to the liquor store and get, you know, what's ever on the bottom shelf or whatever's cheap. And you know, most of the times, it's not always the best tequila, you know. Um, and I think that's kind of where. I've never had a bad tequila experience. So I can't say for me like what it is, like, you know, in my sense, but I guess for people for who say they've had a bad experience with tequila, um, you know, it's because they're going out and buying these really cheap tequila brands and, you know, it's not developed well, the tequila, it's not processed well, they're using really cheap agaves and, you know, I mean, it's gonna cause them to have some really bad hangovers. So um, I'm really trying, with this brand, I'm really trying to, you know, put out there that, you know, not all tequila is bad. And, you know, I've got a really good, high quality tequila brand. You know, just try it out. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid of it. I mean, you know, have a good time. Have a really good experience without having a really bad hangover or no hangover hangover at all. So, so people buy the low quality stuff. Yeah, and that has created the stigma. You're trying to create a good brand that obviously costs a little bit more. Yes, but it doesn't leave you with all the the side effects, the after effects, the hangovers, no. etc. No. So that's what you're trying to conquer. Yeah, there shouldn't be any side effects. You know, it shouldn't come with like a, a, a labor warning with all this you know, hey, it may cause this, may cause that. No, it's, no, it's not like that. It shouldn't be like that. And, you know, people need to be aware of that. So, yeah. <laughs> so tell me about the experience of, of sourcing the tequila from Jalisco in Mexico. How did that start? And what has that relationship looked like uh, in, in partnership with uh, the distillery in Mexico? Okay, yeah. So um, I worked, I started this about two and a half years ago. And like I said, I was working with a TABC consultant and she kind of just guided me along the way. Texas and Alcoholic Beverage Commission? Yes, okay, yes, good. yes. And um, so I found this really good distillery. Um, they've been around for a long time and it's family owned. And I was just talking with the son who, his parents own the distillery. So it was the son, he kind of just, He's like the general manager of, of the distillery. And um, it kind of just went from there. Uh, sourcing it, when I first got into it, um, I should have done a little bit more research because um, a lot of, there were a lot of bumps in the road um, that I was not expecting. I made a lot of mistakes and I know entrepreneurs make mistakes, but I was not expecting that. Um, but it, it was a little difficult, I'm not gonna lie. So um, sourcing was a little, again, difficult, but you know, I think, you know, I was able just to get around that. Um, I met people in the industry that were kind of able to also help guide me along the way to, to get to where I'm at right now. And is, is the whole process done in Mexico and then you're kind of importing the finished product or are you bottling it here? You know, wh what is what does your process look like from agave plant to ending up on, on my table? Yes, so uh, tequila can't be called tequila if it's not coming from Mexico. So anybody making tequila here is, that's not the real deal. So, um, so yes, it's all sourced um, and bottled, distilled, bottled, and labeled all in Mexico, and then it is imported here into the U.S. So, yeah. Very good. And tell me about the name, Ego Tequila. I bet there's a great story behind this. Tell, yeah. tell us how you named it. So um, I actually named it Ego just because I really like the way of drinking really good, well, quality made tequila makes me feel. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing, you know, but I feel really good after, you know, I'm drinking on some tequila. So I just, I don't know, kind of have like a different personality. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, but um, I named it Ego after that just because I like the way it makes me feel, just like a whole different person. Nothing, Not in a bad way, though. <laughs> nothing, no, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong no, with that. No. So tell me about uh, different products or, or how many different things do you have on the shelf yes. uh, with the Ego brand on it? Yeah, so right now we have a Blanco and a Reposado. Mm -hmm. um, I am looking next year to start expanding um, and bringing on an Añejo. Um, a lot of people have been asking about that, too. So that's one of my big goals is to bring on the Añejo. Okay, now educate us a little bit. So Blanco 
is the what not aged stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Reposado has been aged a little bit and Añejo has been aged for a while. T yes. Tell us more about how that works. Yes. So the Blanco is uh, bottled immediately after, I mean, it rests in stainless steel tanks until it's ready to be bottled, but it's not aged at all. Our Reposado is aged for eight months in white American oak whiskey barrels. Um, so it's got more of a really nice oaky honey flavors. It's not peppery at all. A lot of some tequilas have that peppery aftertaste, ours don't. Um, so it's it's really, really, really smooth. I love our Reposado. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first got into tequila, I was always like a, a Blanco girl, but Reposado has just been my thing lately. I, I love it, it's super good, super good. And how long is the Añejo aged for? Uh, over 12 months, yes. 12 months, yes. okay. Now some distilleries are different, um, but the minimum is like 12 months. Very cool. And that's all done in Mexico as well? All done in Mexico, yes. Wow. So do you have some Añejo that's aging as we speak? Yes, there's Añejo aging as, yes, as we speak. Okay. So yeah. when do we think that'll be done or when, when do you expect that to hit the market? Um, I'm working maybe by the end of next summer. Okay. Very yeah. good. Yeah. So what's it like to go from, I have this idea, I want to be an entrepreneur, to walking into a local liquor store and seeing your product on the shelves? Tell me what that, tell me what that's like. Um, honestly, I haven't been, when I walk into a store and see it on the shelves, like, yes, I'm super proud of myself, but I haven't really been giving myself a lot of recognition, I guess just because, um, I'm not able to just enjoy the moment. I don't know why I'm always thinking in the future. So I haven't really been able to be like, girl, like, this is your brand. Like, this is your baby. Like, you know, you did this. I haven't really been able to tell myself that just because I'm always worried about what's coming next, so. Well, you pass the entrepreneur test. You're always thinking yeah. about what's next. Yeah. No, that's that's exactly right. You're <laughs> certainly not alone in that. Yeah. Um, and tell me about the award that you won. Yeah, so um, we launched in July, this past July we launched. Of 2021. Uh, yes, of 2021. Wow. And um, a lot of the Spirits Awards were already have already like taken place and everything. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I wanna get into at least like one competition. And so I had submitted the brand. We hadn't launched just yet though. Um, but you know, I submitted it and we got a silver award for the bartender spirits. So um, that was good. We would've got many awards, but like I said, we hadn't launched yet and they had already passed. So I was like, it's okay, we'll come next year. And was that so. like a state competition or it's national a nation, competition? It's a national wow. competition, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good, yeah. Tacoma Silver, I yeah. love it, that's great. <laughs> so tequila, distilling, mm -hmm. alcohol business, that's not your background. No, it's not. You have a background, at, of all things, as an accountant. Mm -hmm. uh, are you still an accountant? And, and what was it like to kind of work as an accountant while you're dreaming about being uh, a tequila entrepreneur? Um, no, I'm not doing accounting anymore. Uh, I mean, I do accounting now for my business, so, but, you know, as working for somebody else as an accountant, I don't do it anymore. But, um, yeah, working, uh, you know, an eight to five and trying to launch my business, uh, it was really difficult, um, you know, not having enough time to, like, plan meetings or, you know, talk to different vendors. Um, that's kind of also what led to some of the hiccups in the road with this brand, um, just because, you know, most of my time went to someone else's business. So uh, it was a challenge. I'll bet, and how did you know when you hit that inflection point, when it was time to quit your day job and focus on tequila full time? Was there like a moment where you said, this is it, I'm done, or the tequila business took off and you knew you needed to go in that direction? So this past year, actually last year, I realized the moment is when I was let go. And so that's when I was like, you know, I, I pray all the time. And so I was like, I think this is God's way of just saying like, you know, this is it. Like you can do it full time. You can put all your energy into getting this brand off the ground. And, you know, I think, I think that's just the moment where I realized that and, you know, I think everything happens for a reason. So um, yeah, because if I wasn't let go, I don't know if we would have been able to launch, you know, so. Well, that's such a common story. You know, yeah. something happens, the entrepreneur loses their job or, or they just get fed up or their boss mm -hmm. leaves or something forces their hand. Yeah. And then they take that side hustle and turn that into their full-time gig. And yeah. it's, it's a really common story. So, so kudos to you for, yeah. for jumping in and making that happen. <laughs> so, uh, so what advice do you have for entrepreneurs who are working 
in a day job, but have this side hustle or have this other thing that they want to start, what advice would you offer to anybody listening who's in that boat? My advice would be that, you know, when I was presented like different promotions, you know, I was given like, you know, recognition on things I would accomplish um, for the company I would work for. Sometimes I would be like, okay, maybe I can hold off on launching my brand, you know? Um, but I had to realize is like, that's not what I wanted. And, um, and I didn't want to settle for that. So I would just say, to people who are working this a nine to five and have a side hustle that want to turn that into a full time, you know, gig, you know, don't settle. Just you know, keep fo remain focused, keep doing what you're doing, you know, and you know, it'll work out. So, Ricky, the question we always ask to end this show, I want to know who your favorite innovator is in Fort Worth. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna say Jonathan Morris because um, I remember, I think I heard about him like two years ago, right? And I was like, okay, he's got like all these businesses, you know, he's got the barbershop. And then I had found out that he had opened Hotel Dreiss. And I've been there, it's super beautiful. When I walked in, I felt so important. Like I, I was blown away by it. And um, when we had launched, he had sent me like a friend request, like on Instagram and I was blown away. I was like, oh my gosh, he reached out to me. He sent me a friend request, like I'm nobody. So um, I'm gonna say Jonathan because uh, what he's doing is awesome. I think that is super cool to, you know, have all these other businesses and then like you open your own hotel. I, I think that's amazing. So yeah. Well, we love Jonathan. He's been on, he's been on the show before. I saw. <laughs> and Jonathan, if you're listening, we have a new tequila for you okay. to try. Uh, that you, you can put at Hotel yeah. Dries. Oh, so. I'm going to meet him next week. I oh, okay. messaged there him today. He was like, hey, can we just connect? So, you know, yeah. And he has a bottle of my Reposado, too. There you go. Him, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. <laughs> well, Ricky, thank you so much for joining me on Innovate Fort Worth. If you want to learn more about Ego Tequila, visit egotequila.com. If you like learning about innovation in Fort Worth, please subscribe to our podcast, Innovate Fort Worth, and be sure to leave us a review. If you want to join the conversation, follow us on social media at HSC Innovates. Be sure to also join our Innovate Fort Worth podcast Facebook group. Today's episode was produced by Kendall Rogers. Our technical producer is Rob Upchurch. And our digital editors are Matt Hovlick and Summerlee Sherlock. Innovate Fort Worth is brought to you by the University of North Texas Health Science Center at Fort Worth where we are driven to improve the human condition through a passion for innovation and teamwork and tequila.